Morning everyone, it is December 27th and it's that time again for uh, daily Bitcoin and cryptocurrency news. Um, today, this morning is a little weird. Bitcoin was hovering above 16,000 and all of a sudden it took a tumble. Um, this didn't actually reflect how much went down. I means Gemini actually went down as low as 15,000. Now it's coming up a little bit. So there was a pretty big drop, close to a thousand dollar drop on Bitcoin and not really sure why. Bitcoin is still, even though yesterday was a recovery day for Bitcoin, overall Bitcoin strength has gone down. And, you know, I talked about it in several videos. Bitcoin dominance is under 50%. Market cap is still high. It's not a, not at its peak, but it's still pretty high. But overall, Bitcoin is seemingly like coasting right now. Okay. And coasting upwards, but coasting nevertheless. So, um, you know, finishing out the year at 20,000, maybe, maybe it's, you know, seeing how it's going up and down. It, yesterday, seeing how it was already up to 16,000. I expected if today was at 17,000, then hitting 20,000 by year end should not be a problem. But now it's looking like maybe it's just going to hover and maybe settle around 16, 17,000, which is fine. Um, so it's, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of weird though. It dropped, uh, you know, almost a thousand, um, dollars all of a sudden, but Hey, it's crypto cryptocurrency, you know, in this land, things move very quickly. Okay. Um, so the, the title of this video is Coinbase Killers, okay? And after I go through this list, I'm going to talk about a few um, coins that people have deemed as Coinbase Killers. And let me explain why I don't think Coinbase will go away anytime soon and why some of these alternatives that are deemed Coinbase Killers are far from it. Although there's one that's, I guess, somewhat close, but others are nowhere close. Okay, um, all right, so going down this list, you know, you got some reds, you got some greens. Ripple definitely is making a big comeback, 130. You know, I've been, you know, telling you guys, what, Ripple's heading, yesterday was like 110. I said, you know what, Ripple's heading back to 150s. That's, that's a for sure thing. Asia loves Ripple, okay, and that's not going to stop anytime soon. And they had... You know, um, there's a reason why they love it because it's being used. It's going to be used by all the major banks in Japan and South Korea. But um, yeah, so it's heading up. No surprise there. Um, you know, I still think it has room to grow. It'll hit 150 for sure. Now, whether or not it goes from 150 to two dollars in a short period of time, I don't know. But I I do expect it to continue upwards. The volume is higher than Ethereum anytime. You know, Ethereum's volume is pretty high. It's, you know, it's one of those ones that's usually second next to Bitcoin. So whenever you see a coin with a volume higher than Ethereum, you know something's going on, okay? Um, Bitcoin Cash took a little double, although it got as high as, you know, 3,000 again, which is good for Bitcoin Cash. Um, I've noticed that um, one of the exchanges I like beginners to go on is CEX.io. They also allow direct buying of Bitcoin Cash now. So Bitcoin Cash is definitely here to stay. You got now Coinbase that's doing direct fiat buying of Bitcoin Cash. You got CEX.io. I'm sure there's other ones that are going to be supporting Bitcoin Cash. Um, Bitcoin Cash, um, direct buying Bitcoin Cash with fiat currency. And when you have that happen, you know, it's going to be in front of people's faces, right? Um, a lot of newcomers to the space, when they get on Coinbase, they always ask me now, what should I buy? Bitcoin is too expensive. Should I look at Bitcoin Cash? Should I look at Litecoin? Should I look at Ethereum? That's unfortunately a lot of the newcomers to the space. They don't really know the difference between the coins and what purpose they serve, but they look at the price. So a lot of people are going to look at, well, Bitcoin is too expensive. Maybe I should get Bitcoin Cash. So, um, I've been saying for a while, Bitcoin Cash is hard to kill. It's not going to go away anytime soon. Um, you know, I poke fun of Roger Veer a lot and him and his buddies pumping Bitcoin Cash all the time and stuff. Um, let me just clarify that. What he's saying is true, but the way he's going about it, I have a problem with. Okay, What Roger Veer is saying about Bitcoin Cash versus Bitcoin in terms of transaction fees and all that stuff is true. You try to, like just the other day, I tried to send my uh, my mom $100. And right before I sent it, I checked the transaction fee. 
and it was gonna cost me thirty dollars to send a hundred dollars. So she would have only got seventy, and I said no. Um, so that's the problem Bitcoin is facing because the volume is so high, the the network can't handle it. Um, so the fees go up, and Segwit, you know, um, is also a little bit more costly. Bitcoin Cash right now, you send Bitcoin Cash, it costs you know cents to send, right? But um, so that whatever Roger Beer is saying is true. There's no doubt that transaction fees right now is killing Bitcoin and killing um, adoption of Bitcoin with merchants because of how expensive it is. But you got to look at it on the flip side. The reason for that is because no one is really us- utilizing Bitcoin Cash. You, you, let's say tomorrow you flip every Bitcoin user to Bitcoin Cash, you go see those transaction fees goes up. Okay, maybe not as much as Bitcoin, but it still go cost you dollars because of the fact that right now just no one <laughs> is really using Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash is literally used as something that's only um, a tradable asset. That's it. There's no merchants out there besides Bitcoin.com, which is owned by Roger Veer. But besides that, no one else takes Bitcoin Cash. So it's not being used. All this transaction is 1.4 billion. It's all between exchanges and people buying and selling, buying and selling, and no one's actually using it. So if you actually flip all these Bitcoin users onto Bitcoin Cash, you're going to see transaction fees go up. So there's no doubt about that. Roger Veer doesn't bring that up, all right? And then he also talks about how the Bitcoin core team is destroying Bitcoin and all this stuff and just throwing all this FUD everywhere. Um, I don't agree with that, right? If you if you want to promote Bitcoin Cash, do it in a fair way. Present the facts and that's it. Don't literally every day on Twitter make an argument about how Bitcoin Core is destroying Bitcoin and how users are being doped, duped into thinking that... Um, you know, it's better and stuff like that. And he also makes the argument that it both can't exist. I don't see why not. Bitcoin could become a store of value. It could be something that, you know what, if it doesn't scale well, it doesn't matter because in the future, everyone's going to be hoarding Bitcoin. So then they're not going to be using it every day. They're probably not going to be using it even in months, maybe once a year, maybe once every five years. You know, it'll be something that you hold. So then the tr- sole transactions r- really doesn't matter. And you can have something like Bitcoin Cash or Ripple or Litecoin become the day-to-day transaction coins, right? But you got to realize since Bitcoin Cash is based on the Bitcoin code, okay, there's still a finite number of 21 million, right? So it doesn't matter how much is divisible by. If the value starts going up, it's going to affect it. It's going to be one of those things where it does become more and more valuable. And when it becomes more and more valuable, are people really going to start using it day to day or would they rather hold it as a store of value so that in bitcoin cash becomes a store of value then again it defeats the purpose of being a transaction coin for every day um so that's the kind of problem it'll face too if it gets mass adoption and everyone loves bitcoin cash and it starts going up in value so bitcoin cash is only slightly better position than bitcoin in terms of hand on transactions and and the fees and stuff like that but you get just as many people on Bitcoin Cash, it's still gonna be slow, okay? It's not gonna be that fast. It's still gonna be slow and it can only handle so many transactions. So um, the fees are still gonna go up. So that's the thing, okay? But Bitcoin Cash, that's my rant on Bitcoin Cash today. Um, it is going, it is here to stay. Whether it stays at these levels, I don't know. All right, <clears throat> so moving on from Bitcoin Cash. Um, you got a lot of non-movers right now. So you got, you know, Litecoin down a little bit, Dash down a little bit, Cardano pretty much even, um, IOTA slightly up, Monero, yes. So the market is not, today is kind of like neutral, not really good, not really bad. There's some movers, some not. Um, let me see, Bitcoin. Uh, BitConnect is uh, still on a tear. Actually, it came down a little bit. Thank God. I don't know why. That that's crazy. It should not be going up 100% a day. That doesn't make any sense. Um, Ryblox and H share. They they still go up. Yeah, I I I gotta do a better job. I gotta understand what they are because I, I don't know what they do. Um, Binance Coin. I actually do like Binance Coin now. So Binance coins should not be worth a billion dollars. So let me just say that it's, it should be worth nowhere close to that. But 
as you guys have seen, a lot of the coins I talk about is exclusive on Binance. And Binance is doing a stellar job at, um, you know, being such a new exchange and all. You know, at first when it came out, it was very flaky. Uh, no one really trusted it. But they have established themselves as a trustworthy exchange that is getting pretty big. Okay. Um, they're getting a lot of exclusive coins. Okay. Especially the ones out of China. Since Binance is China, it's not going on Bitrix first. And a lot of people say, well, I like to see it on Bitrix. Well, it, it's starting to get to a point where it really makes no difference now if something opens on Binance, then on Bitrix. Binance has an awesome app. Okay. If you use the mobile app, it's awesome. I use it all the time. Bitrix does not. Um, so I really like Binance. And they have this coin set up where you get. Um, you get discount on your transaction fees if you use Binance Coin to buy and sell um, on Binance. There's trading pairs for Binance Coins uh, too, which I never do. I, all the trading pairs I do is always BTC. I never look at ETH or anything else. Um, but, and then they also take their profits to do coin burn. So they have 100 million. So they're going to eventually burn it down to 50 million. Okay, so that will increase it. But overall, Binance Coin. I'm pro for Binance, not so much on Binance Coin, but I can see how as Binance gets more and more popular, people do want to save on those transaction fees. So, you know, they'll probably stock up on Binance Coin. So that's the reason why Binance Coin has been going up a lot. You know, I've I've I looked at them since they were in the dollars, you know, two dollars, five dollars, now almost ten dollars. Um, my thoughts are this will probably continue upwards, but. I mean, man, it's at one billion already. So I don't, I'm not gonna put this on my recommendation list, but I just want to throw that out there for you guys to to recognize. Um, yeah. So, Saya Coin, I, I think this is this is getting crazy. Almost a billion for Saya Coin when I looked at it, you know, a week ago at 300 million or 400 million, but then it's gone gone up. And, and the thing is, Saya Coin has been having problems. And the coin is still going up, so it's definitely being pumped up by a lot of people. But um, not a fan of side coin at one billion. I'll just throw that out. A lot of people, including my insiders, ask me about Arc because now they're starting to hear about the smart bridge and with Ethereum, um, this connection to Ethereum. Um, I'm gonna do another review. Uh, I'll probably put in a video um, some other time. But right now. I'm not a fan of Arc because I think they're they're spending way too much time trying to get the smart bridge going, when some of these other coins already have it done, or um, they're working on a platform where it makes Ethereum obsolete. All right, <clears throat> um, moving on. You got some big movements with uh, V Chain, Syscoin, Made Safe Coin. Good for them. Um, So it gone up a little bit. Um, yeah, you know, I mentioned about something, you know, I think it's created by Vinny something, Linham or something like that. Uh, supposedly he has some claim to fame on Shark Tank and he seems to be making partnerships, right? So, you know, uh, the thing I, I spoke about yesterday or two days ago about there might be some iffiness with Civic. I'm not sure it's warranted. It could just be completely fun, but I haven't discovered anything just yet. Um... Going down, Dunder coin is still up 100% from yesterday. Uh, it's pretty crazy. It's a coin that helps uh, dentists, if you guys can't figure that out by the name. They probably made some kind of deal with some kind of dentist association or something like that. Um, uh, Enigma was going up, it's going up a little again. Edgeless, the casino one I talk about is going up. I think this, I, I actually think Edgeless can go up much higher. It is, uh, it's a casino play where the house gets a 0% edge, which doesn't happen. That's why it's called Edgeless, right? So if you, if you guys like to gamble, um, you know that, you know, like Bakra and Blackjack gives the house the lowest percent edge if you're following the rules correctly if you don't obviously the house has a bigger edge but um when you play things like roulette and stuff like that um the house has a huge edge so edgeless is making it so that the house has zero edge okay so it's actually completely um 50 50 in terms of if you're winning or they're winning um it's it's quite unique 
somehow they found a way to still make money because of it. Um, I think it probably has to do with this uh, just token that it wants you to buy and this will go up in value and that's how they're making money. So that's how it works. Um, people have asked me again about Blocknet. I still think they're a good buy. They kind of, they're at, they're close to their all time highs. A lot of these coins fell, unfortunately, because Bitcoin fell. Um, a few days ago they haven't quite recovered once these recover they should be heading much higher uh storage i you know i mentioned i didn't i was not a fan of Sidecoin at a billion okay because i'm a fan of storage at 162 million much cheaper play they're pretty much doing the same thing not sure why Sidecoin is going up despite the problems they've been having and storage has not really moved um some of these are some of these are getting pretty low um, yeah Brad I'm gonna talk about them pretty soon Hemcoin is going back up which is good Wabi is starting to go back up but not as high as I expected it I, I think Wabi is still is gonna break out soon um, Ethlan I think it's gonna break out soon um, Yo Yo W, I covered them a couple of times. I think they're, yeah, they should be going up from here. All right, so let's let's finish this list. Um, let me talk about what I started this video with with Coinbase killers. Okay, so Coinbase, you, you got to have basically everyone I know um, that started using it has a and has a, like a love and hate relationship with Coinbase, okay? And I still recommend Coinbase to newcomers because quite simply, it's the easiest platform for anyone to get started with cryptocurrency, okay? The easiest by far. Um, the pros is it's super easy to use, okay? And it allows you to now buy up to four cryptocurrencies using fiat currency. No other platform allows that, okay? It's either one, two, or maybe three. No one allows you to buy four right off the bat. Um, and, uh, you know, they operate pretty much around the world. Of course, not everywhere, but in 40 countries. Um, and uh, they basically, they, they're a platform. They're not an exchange so that they have liquidity. They have those coins on hand. So at any, basically any time, unless they run out, which they have a couple times, you can buy it right right away. You're not waiting for someone on the flip side to sell it to you like a traditional exchange. Um, I'm sure Coinbase does things on the back end with GDAX and stuff like that, but for the most part, they do have a whole bunch of liquidity, a um, whole bunch of coins on hand. So as a newcomer, I sign on to Coinbase. I see these four things. I could hook up my credit card or bank account or whatever and say, I want to buy $1,000 with the Litecoin or Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin, whatever. They press buy, bam, they get it in their wallet, it's right there, right? It's the easiest thing to do. You don't have to look at charts and tickers and market price and limit price, all that stuff out the window, right? Um, so as a newcomer, there's no platform better than Coinbase. So those are the pros. Now, if you've been using Coinbase for a while, then you start seeing the cons. Customer service is non-existent. You try to call their number, no one will ever pick up emails are answered weeks after you send it right they ex just expect things to work and sometimes they don't um there's random account closures okay I, I hate to say it but it happens it happened to me some of my insider members have also seen this where one day you go on and they say they close your account you want to talk to them about it no one will answer you they do allow you to withdraw your coins but I have one member that said that they wire transfer in a large amount of money and to this day, and it's been a few weeks now, no one has answered how he's gonna get his money back. So these random account closures are a problem. It's due to their security team thinking that you're doing something illegal or they don't like and they just close it without warning. They don't set anything. They don't tell you why. They just close it. So that's a big negative. And also, um, their fees are a little bit higher. If you look at how much they're charging for, you know, uh, Bitcoin and stuff like that, it's a little bit higher. But ultimately, the the the, the pros, the cons, is still overshadowed by the fact of how easy it is 
how easy it is to get started and so forth, right? So I still recommend it as the, the number one platform for newcomers into, um, into the cryptocurrency space. Um, obviously, once you get used to um, Bitcoin, I mean Coinbase, then you can switch to any other wallets that you want, like Ledger or Exodus or whatever that you may use, right? Binance or Bitrix or whatever, right? So there's a lot of talk about, you know, a Coinbase killer or or what 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 kind of alternatives there are to Coinbase. And if you look at the exchange world, okay, um, there's really none. Okay, so you look at Bitfinex, you look at um, uh, even uh, Polonex, um, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, HitBTC, um, CX.io, all these ones around the world, Kraken, um, there's a lot, okay, they all work like a traditional exchange. They're not like a platform, an easy to use platform, you simply put in your credit card and you can buy, okay. so. People have asked me about bread recently because bread, um, they're advertising themselves as like a Coinbase killer, okay? And bread is simply an app wallet. Um, if you download bread, which the wallet is pretty simple, you could download it on your phone, iOS or Android. They do give you an option to buy Bitcoin, but they're using a third party called Glidera. And where does Glidera get their Bitcoin from? They get it from Kraken. So you're buying it through a middleman, and then they're buying it from Kraken. And Kraken is not the biggest exchange in the world, too. Okay, and between that, you're getting more fees and stuff. So Bread has no liquidity on hand whatsoever. They're basically acting as a wallet. But a lot of people think, oh, they're a Coinbase killer. Um, they could have the potential of that. That's nonsense. They're nowhere close to it. As for a wallet, it's pretty easy to use. There's no doubt it's a good wallet. But being close to Coinbase killer, no, not even close. Um, they're basically equivalent to what BitPay is right now. Those that have been in, you know, Bitcoin world for a while, BitPay does the exact same thing. You download the app, they just don't have a coin, so people don't know about them. Um, well, I should say the new people don't know about them. But if you go on, you know, you can download the app, um, you could buy Bitcoin also using Glidera, and they also allow you to get a debit card where you can spend your Bitcoins directly from your wallet, which is great. Similar to 10x and Centra and all these other companies, which, you know what, it seems like no one pays attention to Bitcoin, BitPay because they don't have a coin out there. Um, but BitPay already does all that. Um, so, Brad is definitely not a Coinbase killer, right? And one of my, I guess, YouTube colleagues, for cryptocurrency, I, I think you guys know who, who that person is. Um, been talking about ethos, okay? About how this is the greatest thing ever in history and how it's gonna make everyone millionaires and so forth and it's gonna go up a thousand percent in 2018. And all, my, all that might be true, okay? But you gotta take it with a grain of salt. But why is he so enthusiastic about ethos? He says also, this is a Coinbase killer. Right, this is much closer to Coinbase Killer because they're they're coming out with a universal wallet. Universal wallet just means that it's going to be a mobile app that supports multiple, you know, multiple wallets for multiple coins. But you got wallets like that already, right? Like, um, for example, this Mycelium, right, has a lot of. Um, has a lot of coins that it supports and obviously you look at someone like 10x or whatever it has five coins that it supports because it allows you to withdraw from five coins so universal wallet is not a new idea okay there's a lot of apps a lot of players that's trying to get into this um there's other coins that are just exclusive to universal wallets not a new concept okay um now, if they come out and say, well, we could support 100 coins, okay, that would be crazy. That would be nice. But, you know, up to this point, only exchanges can support so many wallets. But the other thing, I think what makes it closer to Coinbase Killer is their liquidity network, which means that they're going to actually store liquidity, okay, so that you can buy, you know, you can deposit, withdraw, send, exchange, any of your wallets 
instantly, which basically means you can buy and sell instantly, right? They don't actually put in here that you're buying with fiat currency. So that's the difference, okay? So even if they did have this network of all these coins that their wallet, you know, supports, they don't allow direct buying, at least not yet, okay? And maybe they, they are going to have plans, but that's the biggest difference between Coinbase and uh, everything else. It's the fact that people can use their fiat currency and buy and sell these current the cryptocurrency. And that's a huge thing because if you're a crypto head, you know, crypto enthusiast or whatever you call yourself, um, yeah, transferring, you know, Bitcoin between here and there and stuff, buying and selling exchanges, no big deal. You know it, right? You try to introduce your mom or your grandparents or someone that's computer illiterate. You try to teach them all that. It's going to take a long time. They don't want to know that. If they want to buy Bitcoin, they want to do it in terms of how Coinbase does it. You put in your credit card information, you tell them how much Bitcoin you buy, and now they know they own Bitcoin in their wallet. That's it. They don't want to know all that other nonsense in the background. So even though Ethos provides a liquidity network and maybe the crypto enthusiasts um, know how to use it, newcomers won't. So that will be still a huge difference between Coinbase and Ethos. So I just want to throw that out there. There's a lot of terms, a lot of companies or a lot of people saying, yeah, there, there's going to be all these Coinbase killers. Okay. No one has a setup close to Coinbase, okay? And that's the reason why they're the number one exchange in the US and they're becoming one of the largest in the world. Um, and it's because of that fact, you know, what, until I see something where um, they go have some kind of platform, easy to use platform with a huge liquidity uh, network, I guess liquidity behind it, and allows you to direct buy with credit card and, and, and uh, bank account, until I see that come out, there's going to be nothing that, that I think is going to be a Coinbase killer anytime soon. Um, so I just want to throw that out there. I'm, no, I'm only going to tell, talk about Bread and Ethos because I, I don't want to talk about the other ones. They're pretty much the same thing. Um, but as far as Ethos, a good buy. It's not bad looking at it, right? Because besides this, they want to do this, which basically is like a fund um, structure right for those people that don't know how to invest in cryptocurrencies it looks like they're offering this one click diversification which allows you to invest in multiple currencies I'm in, in a fun manner I'm guessing they're coming out different kind of asset classes or funds or whatever classes that you can just buy into so if you combine all these three yeah I mean it's, it doesn't sound like it's a bad thing it doesn't sound like it's a bad coin I do know that it's been pumped up a lot um, so as from a price structure, I don't know if this is a good time to get in, but you know what, if the other colleague of mine, I guess, thinks it's going to go up a thousand percent, maybe it will. Um, all right. So that's pretty much it in terms of the market, these Coinbase, supposedly Coinbase killers. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me show you. There's still some confusion on um, my uh, portfolio strategy yesterday, okay, and, and from a few days ago. So the 50, 25, 25 rule. So um, the confusion comes in what's a high cap coin, what's a low cap coin. And I, I've said it before, but, you know, I guess I'll restate some of these things over and over again because there's always new follower, new subscribers watching these videos. So high cap coin is what I consider anything above 5 billion in market cap. And low cap is anything below. Um, so if you look at the list here, and there's a lot more now than before in terms of what's above five, um, five billion. So up to you know this Bitcoin gold, I guess say, you know honestly since Neo and you know Neo and Stellar and Quantum when it was above four so close, you know there's there's no like definite line, okay. But anything I, I say roughly five billion and over will be high cap. So these are the ones that are slower moving. Okay, but they're definitely high movers. Um, we have seen some of these go up 200, 300, 400 percent in the last few weeks. But overall, they're still trending upwards. They're faster than Bitcoin in terms of how how much they go up, but they also drop faster than Bitcoin. Okay, so that's why 50 percent in Bitcoin is kind of the staple. It's solid. It's more solid. So that ups and downs. The percentages are a lot less, but overall they're, they're like a solid dig in your platform. 
And the mid, the high cap are the ones that you fill 25% of your portfolio because they're still fast movers, but they can also decrease just as fast as you guys have seen over this past week. And then the last 25 weeks are low caps, and they can go all the way from 4 billion all the way down to 1 million, okay? And those are the ones that are high, high flying sometimes. And I will show you, I, I, I made a spreadsheet yesterday, not to brag, but a little bit, yes, because these are my coin picks um, that I introduced to Insider and then I introduced to you guys on YouTube a few days later. All right, so I just went back pretty much a month up to November 22nd, okay? So these are the prices I told my insiders to get into. These are the today's prices, okay? And these aren't even the peak prices because a lot of these are lower from this last week. So these are the peak prices. But even looking at today's prices, you know what? I've held my insider overall gain 332% on their portfolio. Okay, that's a lot. Even in my standards, it's a lot. Okay, because prior to November, things were much slower moving. And plus, I, you know, my picks weren't as good. So this is not, it's not going to be forever. But, but in the month of November, December, awesome, right? And if you look at the peaks, and if my members and you guys have sold at the peaks, we're talking about almost 600% gain. You know, two coins, you know, what are the chances of uh, anyone else recommending two coins within a month that has seen a thousand percent gain? I'm going to say no one else. Okay. So again, this is the 25% that I was talking about, right? So when you have 25% of low caps and these are all low caps, that's where you can see a tremendous, tremendous gain and it pulls your portfolio up. Now, some of these might have the opposite effect and it go in reverse, okay? And it might pull your portfolio down, but that's where the high cap coins then is a hedge against your low cap and then Bitcoin is also a hedge against that. So that's why I have this three tier setup, right? And then, but if you see like one of these coins that you hold on like Verge or Next or whatever, go up a thousand percent, it will move your portfolio up, okay? So there's no doubt about that. So. A lot of people get tend to get too greedy. They try to put everything and all their eggs in one basket in one of these or something, but it might flip down, you know, just like next, right? I've been ta talking about next forever. I said, you know, get out before the, the snapshot. A lot of people want to risk it. That's fine. But you know what? You know, it's, it's fallen from 260 down to 150. It might fall more. Who knows? So it's one of those things. If you got in at $2 and now it's at 150, you're, you're at a huge loss, right? So, um, you got, yeah, so basically that, that's my point. That's why you have to have three layers. High cap is usually what I team. Anything over $5 billion market cap. Low cap is anything under. Okay, so I also promised the two coins that I recently um, released in Insider. They're not on here. Did that on purpose. A lot of you guys guessed in the comments, so it's not a surprise by now, okay? Um, let me bring up Substratum, Okay. It's gone up a little bit today, which is good. <clears throat> Overall, it's been making healthy strides. Um, they are trying to come up with a decentralized uh, decentralized internet, which is awesome. But you know, a few months ago, a few you know, um, people are thinking, you know, what's the big deal? I don't I don't care about decentralized internet. Internet works, right? But in the U.S., net net neutrality is a big deal, and the FCC is thinking about repealing it. Net neutrality basically makes it so that all the internet service providers, such as AT&T, Comcast, Verizon of the world, have to play fair. They can't um, slow down services or um, make services uh, unavailable or charge you more for certain services. So for example, Netflix, a lot of you guys probably know, years ago when they were getting popular, it was deemed that Netflix was taking up like 75% of all internet traffic um, in the US, right? And Verizon decided, no, 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 I don't like that. And they decided to slow down Netflix traffic over the net uh, Verizon network. It took forever for Netflix to figure out because it wasn't until people started complaining and then they figured out, they took Verizon to court and said, you can't do that based on net neutrality. And they won and now it's fair and square. But if net neutrality is revoked, Okay, Verizon, AT&T, and Comcast can all do that because they all have streaming plays now, right? So they can promote their own um, their own streaming like Hulu or 
or Amazon Prime or whatever partnerships they may have and have them operate efficiently and then make Netflix experience horrible or charge people to utilize Netflix. So that's what net neutrality is about. And also in countries like China, which you, you guys know, they block a lot of Western um, uh, websites like Facebook and Google and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot of countries around the world that have extreme censorship where the government doesn't want their people to look at the entire internet. That's where Substratum is, um, is interesting. Now it's blowing up. People are looking into it because their decentralized model is awesome where people, basically people can make their computers into these nodes basically and you get paid for it. So if you run, you run this software, you, you click yes and turns on, you start making these sub tokens as your, your computer becomes a node. And they have a DNS server where basically any web traffic coming in that's hitting one of these new pages that's sitting on a sub substratum network, um, it will automatically find a closest node to that person and route the traffic to them. Um, so from a um, blocking perspective, you're talking about one to thousands, tens of thousands. So to block it is basically um, impossible. Um, the only draw side is only the new pages being created put on substratum's um, uh, network. Um, will work this way the, the existing internet will not until those get transisted over but nevertheless it's a it's a new concept it's um it sounds very promising and they have they've been having their alpha test and they'll go release their open beta in january sometime so that's why it's come to my attention this is a good play to get into it's very hot in the u.s and also around the world too i'm sure there's other countries that have net neutrality laws that they worry about or just complete censorship so um, that's one of my plays. The other play, which most people do not know of, is Lunar. Okay, and this is one that I've looked at for a long time. Man, this actually dropped from my recommendation um, when I recommended when I recommended them. They were at a peak about fourteen dollars. They came come down, but I think this has huge potential, um, and simply because if you look at just the the foundation, twenty eight million in market cap, which is very low. This is an ultra low market cap. Usually if you look at coins with this kind of market cap and you look at what they have, it's pretty much nothing. It's either a scam coin or it's a company that basically has no, nothing to show for, okay? And that's not what Lunar is. This is not a pump coin, okay? And you'll you'll hear why. And also, if you look at their total supply and circulating supply, this is ridiculous. John McAfee came out and said, there's no coin out there on earth <clears throat> That has a lower supply or <clears throat> low, lower circulating supply than Bitcoin. Well, I'm proving him wrong right now. Lunar has a lower circulating supply and total supply compared to Bitcoin. This is ridiculous. Okay, 2.7 million total, and there's only 2.3 circulating. I mean, this is ridiculously low. This is almost 10 times lower than Bitcoin. So, based on the market cap and circulating supply and total supply, the potential of it to jump very fast is there. Okay. But again, this is not a pump coin. Lunar is a decentralized Wikipedia. And if you go on their website, um, I could just do it now real quick. So uh, if you actually, there's an alpha test you can do, but it, too late. I mean, it, you just might as well wait for the open beta. But their, their, um, their platform is beautiful. Okay, they're trying to make, you know, Wikipedia 2.0 something that looks super intuitive super easy to use and then plus they're adding this layer of being able to incentivize people right so that if people post up a really great article or great topic or whatever you get to um, tip them through lunar tokens um, so that's a big thing that's a big draw to get people actually to contribute to the platform and plus, as a user, you know, of course, when you first got on a platform, there's nothing there. No one's going to come on. So this is a great way to get adoption going. Um, they also been um, testing with their alpha for a while. And they're going to come out their open beta in um, January. Now, a lot of the reviewers that tried their alpha have stated how awesome the platform is in terms of how smooth and how great everything's working. Um, when I first reviewed Lunar four months ago, they were coming out of their um, ICO. I thought this was a good idea. You know, decentralized Wikipedia. Now, a lot of people might think, <clears throat> why do you need a decentralized Wikipedia? Well, 
the biggest thing I can think of is you guys, you know, when you go on Wikipedia, every so often you see these big donations on the top saying contribute a dollar, twenty dollars, or whatever we need it to survive. Well, why is that? Because Wikipedia runs their own servers and they're free. They're they don't they don't charge anything. There's no premium content. There's no ads. Google has offered Wikipedia to, for free hosting as long as they could put Google ads on there, which Wikipedia did not, you know, said no. So Wikipedia is run, it's a foundation that's run on donations. So um, as good as it is, it's limited by that fact where more and more people going on it, they need more and more server space. I don't know if they rent it from AWS or, or Azure or they run their own, but they need that money to crank. Um, that's where decentralized Wikipedia comes in. When you're using the combined power of everyone's you know, mobile device or computers, you add it together, and you host everything spread out across millions of nodes, the, the, the cost to run that infrastructure is a lot, lot less than Wikipedia. Now, of course, there are going to be challenges, but still, the whole premise of decentralization is that you're taking it from one spot and you're separating it out, right? Even though Wikipedia might have 10 server farms or whatever, it's 10 versus millions or billions of devices that potentially could run lunar nodes. So that's where the biggest advantage I think a decentralized Wikipedia brings is the the maintenance cost for running those um, servers. And I think Lunar once it gets once it gets big, will start seeing those substantial savings. And plus, they have this token model, right? So where they can make money when the Lunar tokens goes up, where Wikipedia does not. Um, so they're, they're financially, I think, in a better position. Obviously, they're tiny little ant compared to Wikipedia, right? So nowhere close to there. But if it keeps growing, you know, in five, 10 years, and Lunar is still around, they could definitely start seeing those advantages, okay? So that's the reason why I like Lunar. If um, I'm really waiting for the beta, open beta test to come out in January and supposedly the first few weeks, and then everyone gets to see how good it is. The team's just been cranking at it. They ignored the price. Lunar got down to as low as four dollars at one point, and um, and everyone just you know didn't pay attention to them. But Lunar is actually, um, you know, I, I think it's 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 gonna be one of those once people start recognizing it, um, it's gonna jump very fast, and especially due to the low supply and market cap. Um, yeah, and that's it. So those are my two plays that I'm revealing to you guys. The insiders already got it two days ago. Um, but yeah, as more come, you know, I'll definitely share with you guys. Um, overall, I think a lot of people there's that's starting to tune in my channel, asking questions and learning about cryptocurrency. I think I'm trying to set a good foundation for you guys. Um, ultimately, I think, you know, we're all in it to learn a bit more and to make a lot of money and hopefully I'm providing that for you guys. Okay. All right. That's it for today. It's probably a very long video. I don't even know how long this is now, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. Four billion. It's all between exchanges and people buying and selling, buying and selling, and no one's actually using it. So if you actually flip all these Bitcoin users onto Bitcoin Cash, you go see transaction fees go up. So there's no doubt about that. Roger Veer doesn't bring that up, all right? And then he also talks about how the Bitcoin core team is destroying Bitcoin and all this stuff and just throwing all this FUD everywhere. Um, I don't agree with that, right? If you if you want to promote Bitcoin Cash, do it in a fair way. Present the facts and that's it. Don't literally every day on Twitter make an argument about how Bitcoin core is destroying Bitcoin and how users are being doped, duped into thinking that... Um, you know, it's better and stuff like that. And he also makes the argument that it both can't exist. I don't see why not. Bitcoin could become a store of value. It could be something that, you know what, if it doesn't scale well, it doesn't matter because in the future, everyone's going to be hoarding Bitcoin. So then they're not going to be using it every day. They're probably not going to be using it even in months, maybe once a year, maybe once every five years. You know, it'll be something that you hold. So then the tr sole transactions r really doesn't matter. And you can have something like Bitcoin Cash or Ripple or Litecoin become the day-to-day -day transaction coins, right? But you got to realize since Bitcoin Cash is based on the Bitcoin code, okay, there's still a finite number of 21 million, right? So it doesn't matter how much it's divisible by. If the value starts going up, it's going to affect it. It's going to be one of those things where it does become more and more valuable. And when it becomes more and more valuable, are people really going to start 
using it day to day? Or would they rather hold it as a store of value? So then if Bitcoin Cash becomes a store of value, then again, it defeats the purpose of being a transaction coin for every day. Um, so that's the kind of problem it'll face too if it gets mass adoption and everyone loves Bitcoin Cash and it starts going up in value. So Bitcoin Cash is only slightly better position than Bitcoin in terms of handling transactions and, and the fees and stuff like that. But you get just as many people on Bitcoin Cash, it's still gonna be slow, okay? It's not gonna be that fast. It's still gonna be slow and it can only handle so many transactions. So um, the fees are still gonna go up. So that's the thing, okay? But Bitcoin Cash, that's my rant on Bitcoin Cash today. Um, it, is going, it is here to stay. Whether it stays at these levels, I don't know. All right, <clears throat> so moving on from Bitcoin Cash, um, you got a lot of non-movers right now. So you got, you know, Litecoin down a little bit, Dash down a little bit, Cardano pretty much even, um, IOTA slightly up, Monero, yes. So the market is not, today is kind of like neutral, not really good, not really bad. There's some movers, some not. Um, let me see, Bitcoin uh, is exclusive on Binance, and Binance is doing a stellar job at... Um, you know, being such a new exchange and all, you know, at first when it came out, it was very flaky. Uh, no one really trusted it, but they have established themselves as a trustworthy exchange that is getting pretty big. Okay. Um, they're getting a lot of exclusive coins. Okay. Especially the ones out of China, since Binance is China, it's not going on Bitrix first. And a lot of people say, well, I like to see it on Bitrix. Well, it's starting to get to a point where it really makes no difference now if something opens on Binance then on Bitrix. Binance has an awesome app. Okay, if you use the mobile app, it's awesome. I use it all the time. Bitrix does not. Um, so I really like Binance, and they have this coin set up where you get um, you get discount on your transaction fees if you use Binance Coin to buy and sell um, on Binance. There's trading pairs for Binance Coins uh, too, which I never do. I, all the trading pairs I do is always BTC. I never look at F or anything else. Um, but, and then they also take their profits to do coin burn. So they have 100 million. So they're going to eventually burn it down to 50 million. Okay. So that will increase it. But overall, Binance coin, I'm pro for Binance. Not so much on Binance coin. But I can see how as Binance gets more and more popular, People do want to save on those transaction fees. So, you know, they'll probably stock up on Binance coin. So that's the reason why Binance coin has been going up a lot. You know, I've, I've I looked at them since they were in the dollars, you know, $2, $5, now almost $10. Um, my thoughts are this will probably continue upwards, but I mean, man, it's at 1 billion already. So I don't, I'm not going to put this on my recommendation list, but I just want to throw that out there for you guys to to recognize um yeah so sia coin I, I think this is this is getting crazy almost a billion for sia coin when i looked at it you know a week ago at 300 million or 400 million but then it's gone gone up and, and the thing is sia coin has been having problems and the coin is still going up so it's definitely being pumped up by a lot of people but um not a fan of sia coin at 1 billion i'll just throw that out a lot of people, including my insiders, ask me about ARK because now they're starting to hear about the smart bridge and with Ethereum, um, this connection to Ethereum. Um, I'm going to do another review. Uh, I'll probably put in a video um, some other time. But right now, I'm not a fan of ARK because I think they're, they're spending way too much time trying to get the smart bridge going when some of these other coins already have it done or um, they're working on a platform where it makes Ethereum obsolete. All right. <clears throat> um, moving on. All these ones around the world, Kraken, um, there's a lot, okay? They all work like a traditional exchange. They're not like a platform, an easy to use platform. You simply put in your credit card and you can buy, okay? So people have asked me about bread recently because bread, um, they're advertising themselves as like a coinbase killer okay and bread is simply a app wallet um if you download bread which 
the wallet is pretty simple. You can download it on your phone, iOS or Android. They do give you an option to buy Bitcoin, but they're using a third party called Glidera. And where does Glidera get their Bitcoin from? They get it from Kraken. So you're buying it through a middleman and then they're buying it from Kraken and Kraken is not the biggest exchange in the world too, okay? And between that, you're getting more fees and stuff. So Bread has no liquidity on hand whatsoever. They're basically acting as a wallet, but a lot of people think, oh, they're a Coinbase killer. Um, they could have the potential of that. That's nonsense. They're nowhere close to it. As for a wallet, it's pretty easy to use. There's no doubt it's a good wallet, but being close to Coinbase killer, no not even close um they're basically equivalent to what bitpay is right now those that have been in you know bitcoin world for a while bitpay does the exact same thing you download the app they just don't have a coin so people don't know about them um well i should say the new people don't know about them but if you go on you know you could download the app um you could buy bitcoin also using glidera and they also allow you to get a debit card where you can spend your bitcoins directly from your wallet which is great similar to 10x and centra and all these other companies which you know what it seems like no one pays attention to bitcoin bitpay because they don't have a coin out there um but bitpay already does all that um so brad is definitely not a coinbase killer right and one of my i guess youtube colleagues for cryptocurrency i, I think you guys know who who that person is um been talking about ethos okay about how this is the greatest thing ever in history and how it's gonna make everyone millionaires and so forth and it's gonna go up a thousand percent in 2018 and all my all that might be true okay but you gotta take it with a grain of salt but why is he so enthusiastic about ethos he says also this is a coinbase killer right this is much closer to coinbase killer because they're they're coming out with a universal wallet universal wallet just means that it's gonna be a mobile app that supports multiple you know multiple wallets for multiple coins but you got wallets like that already right like um for example this thing to show for okay and that's not what lunar is this is not a pump coin okay and you'll you'll hear why and also if you look at their total supply and circulating supply this is ridiculous john McAfee came out and said there's no coin out there on earth <clears throat> that has a lower supply or <clears throat> low, lower circulating supply than Bitcoin. Well, I'm proving him wrong right now. Lunar has a lower circulating supply and total supply compared to Bitcoin. This is ridiculous. Okay, 2.7 million total, and there's only 2.3 circulating. I mean, this is ridiculously low. This is almost 10 times lower than Bitcoin. So, based on the market cap and circulating supply and total supply, the potential of it to jump very fast is there. Okay, but again, this is not a pump coin. Lunar is a decentralized Wikipedia. And if you go on their website, um, I could just do it now real quick. So uh, if you actually there's an alpha test you can do, but it, too late. I mean, you just might as well wait for the open beta. But their their um, their platform is beautiful. Okay, they're trying to make, you know, Wikipedia 2.0 something that looks super intuitive super easy to use and then plus they're adding this layer of being able to incentivize people right so that if people post up a really great article or great topic or whatever you get to um, tip them through lunar tokens um, so that's a big thing that's a big draw to get people actually to contribute to the platform and plus, as a user, you know, of course, when you first got on a platform, there's nothing there. No one's going to come on. So this is a great way to get adoption going. Um, they also been um, testing with their alpha for a while. And they're going to come out their open beta in um, January. Now, a lot of the reviewers that tried their alpha have stated how awesome the platform is in terms of how smooth and how great everything's working. Um, when I first reviewed Lunar four months ago, they were coming out of their um, ICO. I thought this was a good idea. You know, decentralized Wikipedia. Now, a lot of people might think, <clears throat> why do you need a decentralized Wikipedia? Well, the biggest thing I can think of is, you guys, you know, when you go on Wikipedia, every so often you see these big donations on the top saying, contribute a dollar, $20 or whatever we needed to survive. Well, why is that? Because Wikipedia 
runs their own servers and they're free. They're, they don't they don't charge anything. There's no premium content. There's no ads. Google has offered Wikipedia to, for free hosting as long as they could put Google ads on there, which Wikipedia did not, you know, said no. So Wikipedia is run, it's a foundation that's run on donations. So um, as good as it is, it's limited by that fact where more and more people going on it, they need more and more server space. I don't know, is their liquidity network, which means that they're gonna actually store liquidity, okay? So that you can buy, you know, you can deposit, withdraw, send, exchange, any of your wallets instantly, which basically means you can buy and sell instantly, right? They don't actually put in here that you're buying with fiat currency. So that's the difference, okay? So even if they did have this network of all these coins that their wallet, you know, supports, they don't allow direct buying, at least not yet, okay? And maybe they, they are going to have plans, but that's the biggest difference between Coinbase and uh, everything else. It's the fact that people can use their fiat currency and buy and sell these current the cryptocurrency. And that's a huge thing because if you're a crypto head, you know, crypto enthusiast or whatever you call yourself, um, yeah, transferring, you know, Bitcoin between here and there and stuff, buying and selling exchanges, no big deal. You know it, right? You try to introduce your mom or your grandparents or someone that's computer illiterate. You try to teach them all that. It's going to take a long time. They don't want to know that. If they want to buy Bitcoin, they want to do it in terms of how Coinbase does it. You put in your credit card information. You tell them how much Bitcoin you buy. And now they know they own Bitcoin in their wallet. That's it. They don't want to know all that other nonsense in the background. So even though Ethos provides a liquidity network and maybe the crypto enthusiasts um, know how to use it, newcomers won't. So that will be still a huge difference between Coinbase and Ethos. So I just want to throw that out there. There's a lot of terms, a lot of companies or a lot of people saying, yeah, there, there's going to be all these Coinbase killers. Okay. No one has a setup close to Coinbase, okay? And that's the reason why they're the number one exchange in the US and they're becoming one of the largest in the world. Um, and it's because of that fact, you know, what, until I see something where um, they go have some kind of platform, easy to use platform with a huge liquidity uh, network, I guess liquidity behind it, and allows you to direct buy with credit card and, and, and uh, bank account, until I see that come out, there's going to be nothing that, that I think is going to be a Coinbase killer anytime soon. Um, so I just want to throw that out there. I'm, no, I'm only going to tell, talk about Bread and Ethos because I, I don't want to talk about the other ones. They're pretty much the same thing. Um, but as far as Ethos, a good buy. It's not bad looking at it, right? Because besides this, they want to do this, which basically is like a fund um, structure right for those people that don't know how to invest in cryptocurrencies it looks like they're offering this one click diversification which allows you to invest in multiple currencies I'm in, in a fun manner I'm guessing they're coming out different kind of asset classes or funds or whatever classes that Wabi is starting to go back up but not as high as I expected it I, I think Wabi is still is going to break out soon um, Athlan, I think it's going to break out soon. Um, Yo Yo W, I covered them a couple of times. I think they're, yeah, they should be going up from here. All right, so let's let's finish this list. Um, let me talk about what I started this video with with Coinbase killers. Okay, so. Coinbase, you, you got to have basically everyone I know um, that started using it has a and has a, like a love and hate relationship with Coinbase. Okay, and I still recommend Coinbase to newcomers because quite simply, it's the easiest platform for anyone to get started with cryptocurrency. Okay, the easiest by far. Um, the pros is it's super easy to use. Okay, and it allows you to now buy up to four cryptocurrencies using fiat currency no other platform allows that okay it's either one two or maybe three no one allows you to buy four right off the bat um, and uh, you know they operate pretty much around the world of course not everywhere but in 40 countries um, and 
they basically they're a platform they're not an exchange so that they have liquidity they have those coins on hand so at any basically any time unless they run out which they have a couple times you can buy it right right away you're not waiting for someone on the flip side to sell it to you like a traditional exchange um I'm sure Coinbase does things on the back end with GDAX and stuff like that, but for the most part, they do have a whole bunch of liquidity, a um, whole bunch of coins on hand. So as a newcomer, I sign on to Coinbase. I see these four things. I could hook up my credit card or bank account or whatever and say, I want to buy $1,000 with the Litecoin or Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin, whatever. They press buy, bam. They get it in their wallet, it's right there, right? It's the easiest thing to do. You don't have to look at charts and tickers and market price and limit price, all that stuff out the window, right? Um, so as a newcomer, there's no platform better than Coinbase. So those are the pros. Now, if you've been using Coinbase for a while, then you start seeing the cons. Customer service is non-existent. You try to call their number, no one will ever pick up. Emails are answered weeks after you send it right they ex just expect things to work and sometimes they don't um there's random account closures okay I, I hate to say it but it happens it happened to me some of my insider members have also seen this where one um you get discount on your transaction fees if you use binance coin to buy and sell um on binance there's trading pairs for binance coins uh too which i never do i all the trading pairs I do is always BTC. I never look at ETH or anything else. Um, but, and then they also take their profits to do coin burn. So they have 100 million. So they're going to eventually burn it down to 50 million. Okay. So that will increase it. But overall, Binance coin, I'm pro for Binance, not so much on Binance coin. But I can see how as Binance gets more and more popular, People do want to save on those transaction fees. So, you know, they'll probably stock up on Binance coin. So that's the reason why Binance coin has been going up a lot. You know, I've, I've, I looked at them since they were in the dollars, you know, $2, $5, now almost $10. Um, my thoughts are this will probably continue upwards, but I mean, man, it's at 1 billion already. So I don't, I'm not going to put this on my recommendation list, but I just want to throw that out there for you guys to to recognize um yeah so sia coin I, I think this is this is getting crazy almost a billion for sia coin when i looked at it you know a week ago at 300 million or 400 million but then it's gone gone up and, and the thing is sia coin has been having problems and the coin is still going up so it's definitely being pumped up by a lot of people but um not a fan of sia coin at 1 billion i'll just throw that out a lot of people, including my insiders, ask me about ARK because now they're starting to hear about the smart bridge and with Ethereum, um, this connection to Ethereum. Um, I'm going to do another review. Uh, I'll probably put in a video um, some other time. But right now, I'm not a fan of ARK because I think they're, they're spending way too much time trying to get the smart bridge going when some of these other coins already have it done or um, they're working on a platform where it makes Ethereum obsolete. All right. <clears throat> um, moving on, you got some big movements with uh, V Chain, Syscoin, Made Safe Coin. Good for them. Um, Civic on up a little bit. Um, yeah, you know, I mentioned about something, you know, I think it's created by Vinny, something, Linham, or something like that. Uh, supposedly he has some claim to fame on Shark Tank, and he seems to be making partnerships, right? So, you know, uh, the thing I, I spoke about yesterday or two days ago about there might be some iffiness with Civic. I'm not sure it's warranted. It could just be completely fud, but I haven't discovered anything just yet. Um, going down, Dentacoin is still up 100% from yesterday. Uh, it's pretty crazy. That's, that's a for sure thing. Asia loves Ripple, okay, and that's not gonna stop anytime soon. And they had, you know, um, there's a reason why they love it because it's being used. It's going to be used by all the major banks in Japan and South Korea. But um, yeah, so it's heading up. No surprise there. Um, you know, I 
still think it has room to grow. It'll hit 150 for sure. Now, whether or not it goes from 150 to two dollars in a short period of time, I don't know. But I, I do expect it to continue upwards. The volume is higher than Ethereum. Anytime, you know, Ethereum's volume is pretty high. It's you know, it's one of those ones that's usually second next to Bitcoin. So whenever you see a coin with a volume higher than Ethereum, you know something's going on. Okay. Um, Bitcoin Cash took a little double, although it got as high as you know three thousand again, which is good for Bitcoin Cash. Um, I've noticed that um, one of the exchanges I like beginners to go on is CEX.io. They also allow direct buying of Bitcoin Cash now. So Bitcoin Cash is definitely here to stay. You got now Coinbase that's doing direct fiat buying uh, Bitcoin Cash. You got CEX.io. I'm sure there's other ones that are going to be supporting Bitcoin Cash. Um, Bitcoin Cash, um, direct buying Bitcoin Cash with fiat currency. And when you have that happen, you know, it's going to be in front of people's faces, right? Um, a lot of newcomers to the space, when they get on Coinbase, they always ask me now, what should I buy? Bitcoin's too expensive. Should I look at Bitcoin Cash? Should I look at Litecoin? Should I look at Ethereum? That's unfortunately a lot of the newcomers to the space. They don't really know the difference between the coins and what purpose they serve, but they look at the price. So a lot of people are going to look at, well, Bitcoin's too expensive. Maybe I should get Bitcoin Cash. So um, I've been saying for a while, Bitcoin Cash is hard to kill. It's not going to go away anytime soon. Um, you know, I poke fun of Roger Veer a lot and him and his buddies pumping Bitcoin Cash all the time and stuff. Um, let me just clarify that what he's saying is true, but the way he's going about it, I have a problem with, okay? What Roger Veer is saying about Bitcoin Cash versus Bitcoin in terms of transaction fees and all that stuff is true. You try to, like just the other day, I tried to send my, uh, my mom $100. And right before I sent it, I checked the transaction fee and it was gonna cost me $30 to send $100. So she would have only got 70 and I said no. Um, so that's the problem Bitcoin is facing because the volume is so high, the, the network can't handle it. Um, so the fees go up and SegWit, you know, um, is also a little bit more costly. Bitcoin Cash right now, you send Bitcoin Cash, it costs, you know, cents to send, right? But, um, so that, whatever Roger Veer is saying is true. There's no doubt that transaction fees right now is killing Bitcoin and killing how expensive it is. But you got to look at it on the flip side. The reason for that is because no one is really use, utilizing Bitcoin Cash. You, you, let's say tomorrow you flip every Bitcoin user to Bitcoin Cash, you go see those transaction fees goes up, okay? Maybe not as much as Bitcoin, but it's still gonna cost you dollars because of the fact that right now, just no one <laughs> is really using Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash is literally used as something that's only um, a tradable asset, that's it. There's no merchants out there besides Bitcoin.com, which is owned by Roger Veer. But besides that, no one else takes Bitcoin Cash. So it's not being used. All this transaction is 1.4 billion. It's all between exchanges and people buying and selling, buying and selling, and no one's actually using it. So if you actually flip all these Bitcoin users onto Bitcoin Cash, you go see transaction fees go up. So there's no doubt about that. Roger Veer doesn't bring that up, all right? And then he also talks about how the Bitcoin core team is destroying Bitcoin and all this stuff and just throwing all this FUD everywhere. Um, I don't agree with that, right? If you if you want to promote Bitcoin Cash, do it in a fair way. Present the facts and that's it. Don't literally every day on Twitter make an argument about how Bitcoin Core is destroying Bitcoin and how users are being doped, duped into thinking that, um, you know, it's better and stuff like that. And he also makes the argument that it both can't exist. I don't see why not. Bitcoin could become a store of value. It could be something that, you know what, if it doesn't scale well, it doesn't matter because in the future, everyone's going to be hoarding Bitcoin. So then they're not going to be using it every day. They're probably not going to be using it even in months, maybe once a year, maybe once every five years. You know, it'll be something that you hold. So then the tr sole transactions r really doesn't matter. And you can have something like Bitcoin Cash or Ripple or Litecoin become the day-to-day -day transaction coins, right? But you got to realize since Bitcoin Cash is based on the Bitcoin code, okay, there's still a finite number of 21 million, right? So it doesn't matter how much is divisible by. If the value starts going up, it's going to affect it. It's going to be one of those things where it does become more and more valuable. And when it becomes more and more valuable, are people really going to start 
using it day to day? Or would they rather hold it as a store of value? So that in Bitcoin Cash becomes a store of value, then again, it defeats the purpose of being a transaction coin for every day. Um, so that's the kind of problem it'll face too if it gets mass adoption and everyone loves Bitcoin Cash and it starts going up in value. So Bitcoin Cash is only slightly better position than Bitcoin in terms of handling transactions and, and the fees and stuff like that. But you get just as many people on Bitcoin Cash, it's still gonna be slow, okay? It's not gonna be that fast. It's still gonna be slow and it can only handle so many transactions. So um, the fees are still gonna go Kraken. And Kraken is not the biggest exchange in the world too, okay? And between that, you're getting more fees and stuff. So Bread has no liquidity on hand whatsoever. They're basically acting as a wallet. But a lot of people think, oh, they're a Coinbase killer. Um, they could have the potential of that. That's nonsense. They're nowhere close to it. As for a wallet, it's pretty easy to use. There's no doubt it's a good wallet, but being close to Coinbase killer, no, not even close. Um, they're basically equivalent to what BitPay is right now. Those that have been in, you know, Bitcoin world for a while, BitPay does the exact same thing. You download the app, they just don't have a coin, so people don't know about them. Um, well, I should say the new people don't know about them, but if you go on, you know, you could download the app, um, you could buy Bitcoin also using Glidera, and they also allow you to get a debit card where you can spend your Bitcoins directly from your wallet, which is great. Similar to 10X and Centra and all these other companies, which, you know what, it seems like no one pays attention to Bitcoin, BitPay because they don't have a coin out there. Um, but BitPay already does all that. Um, so, Brad is definitely not a Coinbase killer, right? And one of my, I guess, YouTube colleagues for cryptocurrency, I, I think you guys know who, who that person is, um, been talking about ethos, okay? About how this is the greatest thing ever in history and how it's gonna make everyone millionaires and so forth and it's gonna go up a thousand percent in 2018. And all, my, all that might be true, okay? But you gotta take it with a grain of salt. But why is he so enthusiastic about ethos? He says also, this is a Coinbase killer, right? This is much closer to Coinbase killer because they're, they're coming out with a universal wallet. Universal wallet just means that it's gonna be a mobile app that supports multiple, you know, multiple wallets for multiple coins. But you got wallets like that already, right? Like, um, for example, this, Mycelium, right? It has a lot of, um, has a lot of coins that it supports. And obviously, you look at someone like 10X or whatever, it has five coins that it supports because it allows you to withdraw from five coins. So Universal Wallet is not a new idea, okay? There's a lot of apps, a lot of players that's trying to get into this. Um, there's other coins that are just exclusive to Universal Wallets. Not a new concept, okay? Um, now, if they come out and say, well, we could support 100 coins, okay, that would be crazy. That would be nice. But, you know, up to this point, only exchanges can support so many wallets. But the other thing, I think what makes it closer to Coinbase Scaler is their liquidity network, which means that they're going to actually store liquidity, okay, so that you can buy, you know, you can deposit, withdraw, send, exchange, any of your wallets, 